Psalm 33 and verse 8. I am excited about this message tonight. More excited than you understand. Psalm 33 and 8. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. For He spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Let's pray. Lord, I thank You tonight. Lord, I ask you to anoint me, help me, give me strength, mind, body, help me to preach this word into the hearts of the hearer in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. God is. Y'all yeah, ain't going to get it. I can tell already. You want to try to get God is what? This is a trick question. I've already given you the title. God is. That's it. <laughs> God is. I want to. Yes, God is good. I want to talk a little bit tonight. Genesis chapter 1. That's not where I want to go. Where's my. That's not the next scripture. I'll find it. Well, if I can't find it, I'll just tell you about it. Can I just tell you about it? Exodus chapter 5, I think. Exodus chapter 5. God appears unto Moses in the burning bush. This is the Timothy Dunn literal translation. God appears unto Moses in the burning bush. And as he's talking to Moses, how many of y'all has ever talked to a bush? All right. If their bush talked back, that's weird. Okay? I mean, every, every now and then we, we get aggravated. We walk outside and walk up to the nearest tree because nobody can see us crying and we're all upset. And we're like, and it would be that we're talking to the tree. And we say, why does all this stuff happen to me? As long as it don't talk back, everything's okay. But Moses, on the other hand, had one that started talking back. And in the midst of it, he said, I remember my promise to the children of Israel. And I remember and I remember and I remember. And I want you to go and deliver them. And of course, Moses said, but God, I'm slow as beep, 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 beep. Now, it's kind of funny, Sister Gina, because years later we read that Moses was mighty in word and in deed. Because when he was groomed to be a king, he was around a bunch of kingly people. And he was mighty in word and deed. But after 40 years of hanging around with a bunch of sheep, they went, bah. <coughs> he began to talk to God, bah, no, no. Okay, I'm sorry. It's not as funny as I thought it was. <laughs> but he said, who shall I tell them sent me? And God said, from the burning bush, tell them I am that I am. I am that I am. So when you take a minute and you look up that definition, this is awesome. 400 years. That's a lot longer than y'all have been alive. A lot longer than I've been alive too. Probably longer than I've been alive than some of y'all. But 400 years. And all they had was an old story that they had a great, 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 great grandfather by the name of Abraham who was a friend of God. And he had a son by the name of Isaac, had a son by the name of Joseph, had 12 sons. They were the patriarchs of Israel and all of this. How many of y'all, I mean, I don't know what, what some of y'all's history is, but I've got some history in my life. I've got some Crazy people in my, in my family. I've only heard about them. I never met Grandpa Bob, Joe, whatever his name was. But that dude looked like ZZ Top. He had a beard down to here. He was a wild, woolly dude. He was married to an, a, a full-blooded Cherokee wild woman Indian. And I mean to tell you what, that was one more squall from ever I've ever heard of her. 
But then on the other side, I had another grandfather that was just about as crazy, great-grandfather. He, he had uh, uh, families that didn't know each other, children that he ran off and left a wife and kids and left them, set them up financially and took off and went and got another one. Again, married to a crazy wild woman, Cherokee. And, you know, all of this, I've only heard about it. I've seen a picture of the one with the big old beard and his wife. But, Sister Sir, I, I, I didn't experience any of that. I don't know what he did during the Civil War, but I heard he did. I, I heard all kind of stuff, but I've never experienced it. Well, the children of Israel, 400 years from the experience of Joseph in the, ta in the, temp in the, in the palace. 400 years and even longer than that from the birth of Abraham and when Abraham walked with God and, and God was a figment to their imagination. He was only a story that they had been told. But now God shows up. And I imagine when Moses was a, a little bitty baby sitting on his mama's lap, his mama was nursing him. And I, I just imagine that she told him about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You're a child of this. But I don't think Moses had a clue. But all of a sudden, God begins to speak and says, Moses, I exist. Go tell the children of Israel that I exist. Go tell them that God is. God exists. He's real. He's genuine. He is great. He is wonderful. And He is real. Look at your neighbor and say, God is real. I want to be more like Jesus every day. He's real. He exists in the middle of your storm. I want to show you some things that's awesome about God. Sister Marlena, I don't know if anybody else in here will get this, but I hope they will. Because this is awesome. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. You ready? In the beginning God created the heaven and earth. And the earth... Now, let me stop for a second. This word, I am, is repeated in the Old Testament thousands of times in many, many different applications. We got more words than they had back then. They were much simpler back then. They could kind of just say one word where we got to have a whole explanation. You ever know somebody's got to have everything explained to them in detail? That's kind of like what we are today. But they could just kind of say one thing and it covered it all. But it was, I want to show you some things in the creation story about how God is and about how God works. And if we can get God to apply His nature to our life in this way, it's going to change us. It's going to do some great things in our life. Are you ready? The Word was, verse 2, and the earth was, same word, the earth existed without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters, and God said, watch this, let there be is the same word as I am. Let light exist. And there existed light. That's powerful. Amen. You see, when God says something in your life, it's already done. Hallelujah. Maybe you didn't get that. Yes. When God says, by my stripes you're healed, it's already done. Amen. And God said, let healing exist. And healing existed. Amen. Oh, come on. Help me out a little bit here. Yes. And God saw the light and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And it existed. And darkness he called night. And it existed in the evening and the morning. Existed in the first day. Right, amen. You see, when God makes something to exist, it still happens. Right. It don't wear out. It don't take a day off. 
Brother Hodges, I, I, I don't mean to pick on you, but you may not be the oldest person in here, but can I just ask you, in all of your many years, you're older than me, so I'm just, just stop right there, okay? You may not be older than Sister Shammy, but you're older than me. Have you ever seen the, the, the sun take a holiday? Have you ever seen the sun take a holiday? No, it exists. God is of the nature of existing. He's not temporal. He's not partial. He's not in momentary here and gone tomorrow. He exists. And no matter what the problem, it don't matter how many clouds there are, God exists. In your life, if you would realize that the clouds don't make God more powerful or less powerful, God exists no matter what the condition. He made the moon and existed no matter how far the sun was on the other side of the world. Ooh, that's good. Okay, let me give you the definition of that word. Hawa. I don't know if that's a, a, a Jewish or, or, or a Native American. I don't know. Hawa. It is a primitive word to exist, be, or become, come to pass. Now watch this. It is always, somebody say always, always. empathetic. In other words, it has emphasis. When he said, I am that I am, he did not say, I am that I am. He said, I am that I am. Let there be light. And there was light. Light was the minimal. The emphasis was upon the command. You see, you've got to recognize that we are the minimal and the command is the maximum. You see, God wants to forgive you of your sins. And He exists to show mercy and kindness and love. And the emphasis is on Him. And it falls on us. You may be seated. It's always empathetic. Look at your neighbor and say, it's never Copula. Anybody know what copula means? Just a connector of words. It was never used. Never in the Bible. Was it ever, ever, ever? Look at your neighbor and say, never! never. It was never used as just tying so two other things together. It was the focal point. And it was never auxiliary. You will never find this word in the Old Testament as an auxiliary or a fill-in word. Have you ever got seen somebody... Uh, my dad used to kind of beat me up on this, but if you ever want to learn how to speak, you go to a place called Toastmasters. And you join the club and you learn to speak. It has nothing to do with religion. It's just learning to speak openly and publicly. And whenever you use words like, uh, the, um, mm, uh, uh, they, beat, they tap their glass with the fork. You're not supposed to use filler. Th this word is not a filler word. It's not just something thrown in there because the writer had nothing else to say. It is always the emphasis. Watch as I get, you know... Genesis 6, 1, 6 through 8. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament, the waters which were above the firmament. And it existed. And I didn't put the bold on that scripture because I just ran over about four of them. Trust me, it's in there. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning existed as a second day. You see, when God steps in something, it's there. Watch this. Genesis 2 and 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils, and man existed a living soul. Can I tell you something today? Without your soul, you don't exist. You are not anything without your soul. You see, your flesh and blood are going to die one of these days, but your soul will go on for eternity. Tomorrow will be here because God exists. But your soul must be protected. Because that God had already formed man. 
God already had made the man. But when he existed is when he became a living soul. I'm going to tell you something. We got a generation of soulless people. Amen? I'm going to tell you what. What exists and what makes you really exist in the eyes of God is when you are alive on the flesh and alive in the spirit. That may be too deep for me. And God said, verse 18, and God, and the, and the Lord God said, let not, it is not good that man, that the man exists alone. I got something for you married people. Y'all perk your ears up. It's not good that man exists alone. I will make an help meet for him. Genesis 2, 22, 23 through 25. I love this. Y'all ready? This is powerful. Very, very powerful. Your soul is what makes you exist. What God does never stops. It's always eternal. Once He sets something in motion, only He can stop it. I'll show you why in a few minutes. But when He saw that it was not good that man should be alone, he decided to make a help meet for him. And it says this in Genesis 2, 23. And Adam said, this is after he saw her, Adam, now you see what you don't understand is there becomes a transference of God's power to create upon us. Sister Marlena, God brought that woman to him. But all she was, was another creature. Can I tell you, he never looked in the mirror. He didn't know what he looked like. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe he took a picture of himself with a cell phone and that's how, maybe he did know. <laughs> but, Sister Sharada, since you, you, you probably hadn't heard me say this before, everybody else has. But God said, yeah, I'm going to make a help meet for him. So what do you think he made? He made all the animals. <laughs> and he paraded the orangutans by and he paraded the dogs by and he paraded the giraffes by and the Bible says, Sister Knowlton that there was not found an help meet amongst all of them for him and so all this was was a, another animal until Adam began to speak and when Adam began to speak something began to happen and watch what he said. Therefore, oh wait, back up. Said, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman because she is taken out of man. Therefore, watch here. Therefore, a man, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and exist one flesh. And exist one flesh. When Adam spoke, because he was the Son of God, he had the power to create what was not. You see, God did not make Eve his wife. Adam made Eve his wife. God made her. But Adam chose her. Oh God, send me the right woman. Open your eyes. If a man findeth a wife, he findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from the Lord. It doesn't say if God sends man a wife. It says if you find a wife. So while you're praying with a wife, take God's instruction. Watch and pray. Amen? Because if you'll watch with your eyes and your spiritual man, you'll find what you need to find. Watch and pray. Okay, I'm sorry. I shouldn't. Watch this. Existing both naked, the man and the wife, and they were not ashamed. You see, it goes on to say, what God had joined together, let no man put asunder. You and God begins to authorize the existence of something. You can't tear it down. Can I tell you a secret, Mr. Al Gore? For as great as you understand us to be, we cannot destroy God's creation. Because God set it in motion. Amen. And God determined the speed of the earth. 
Aren't y'all glad it's not any faster than it is? Because the wind going by would be crazy. God set the moon where He set the moon. I'm glad that God is righteous. Let me show you. We preach God is righteous. Let me show you how righteous God is. The sun don't move. The moon orbits on the exact same time, all the time. And the sun, the earth around the sun. And all the other stuff. You, don't want to know, you want to know how righteous God is? You're supposed to say, how righteous is He? How righteous is He? Sister V. Hill, He is so righteous that the Mayans could create a calendar that was correct until they ran out of stone to carve it on. <laughs> Ain't that cool? That's how righteous God is. They were able to predict thousands of years in the future. The exact timing of everything. Because while they were alive, it never changed. How many of you realize that God changes not? God exists. So when you've got a problem, and you can go to the same God that supplied someone else's problem and fixed it, He'll do it for you. For He is no respecter of persons. For what God did in the past, He'll do again. Because God is. God is not a God of yesterday because He is. Yesterday He was God. He's not a God of tomorrow, but tomorrow He is. You see, we look at things in time. God doesn't look at anything in time. God's attitude's like this. It says it in the Scripture very well. A lot of people misquoted this. But understanding helps. For a thousand years is to God a day. What does that mean? Not that we live a thousand years and God is clocking it as a day and people get prophecy all messed up when they read that scripture. It has nothing to do with it. What he's saying, he said, God, can you're, you're all your big time things is nothing to God. It's just easy. You can live a thousand years and God's been around so long. He's just God. He is. It's like another day to him. He is. He's just God. A thousand years on the earth to him is a thousand years on the earth because he set it in time. He put it in motion. He set the morning and the evening. That became a day. And guess what? A thousand years with him is exactly what a thousand years he decided. But as far as his attitude is, I've been around so long, a billion years is like an afternoon in the sun. Okay, I'm exaggerating here a little bit. I'm, you know, I'm, but that's what, and so was, the, so was the writer that he was just kind of giving us an understanding that we get all whooped out of shape because something don't happen in five minutes. God's like, <laughs> it's not a big deal. It's like the amount of time I blink my eyeballs. It's not a, you know what? You let God take care of God's business and you take care of your business and your business is just get up every morning, worship God, live for God, serve God and know that God is. Watch this. I got a few things. <laughs> David said, Psalm chapter 59 and verse 16, But I will sing of thy power, yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning, for thou hast been, for you exist, my defense, my refuge, in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing, for God is my defense, and the God of my mercy. God is! God is. Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth, when I cry unto thee, my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for thou exist a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. God is. When you're in problems, God is. When you're in trial, God is. God is. Psalm 72. His name shall endure forever. Oh, wait. I said that wrong. Let me say it again. His name exists forever. Somebody jump up and tell me. My brain just went dead. Mm. Boy, it went dead real bad. Preached on it the other night. It was really powerful. God is the authority. Amen. What, was the, what was that? Does anybody remember that Hebrew word that we used? 
Hashim. The authority exists forever. Forever is beyond all time. If it started before and there is no ending, the authority is. God is. He is the authority. He is. He is. His name shall be continued as long as the sun. Why is his authority going to continue as long as the sun? Because he made the dumb thing. It can't outlive the Creator. And men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. Psalms 118 verse 21. I will praise thee for thou hast heard me and exist is my salvation. The stone which the builders refused exists. The head. Stone of the corner. I'm going to tell you something. If you're trying to build something, if you'll build it on Jesus. Amen? You're trying to build a future young people, build it on Jesus. He'll exist as the chief cornerstone. Everything can line up perfectly with Jesus. When they set that cornerstone, they would measure off of one point, And the whole building would be fitly framed together. That's what Jesus is. He's the unmovable rock of Zion. Amen. He is. Well, well, well. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. Oh, y'all going to get excited. For that which is conceived of her exists of the Holy Ghost. You see, God is. When you look at Jesus, you're seeing God. Because God is Christ. Christ is God. Jesus is God in the flesh. Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and the Father are one. So he didn't stop being God when he became the Son. Because he was. God exists. It is existing of the Holy Ghost. And there's a New Testament word that correlates to the exact same definition. I'm not going to go through all that. I'm going to hurry up. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, oh, I love this, and said, If you exist, Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. You see, the devil is not sure. If the devil isn't sure, don't you wonder sometimes why when he tempts you, you're not sure if God's alive. When the storms are raging, when the clouds are covering, when there's all kind of problems in your life, and you say, God, are you really there? That's a question laid into your mind by the pits of hell. Satan says, if you exist, make this happen. I'm going to tell you something, devil. Man liveth not by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And God said, I am that I am. Yes, Matthew chapter 7. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Let me rephrase that according to the scripture. The correct <coughs> example. For he exists as one having authority. I never saw that before tonight, Sister Knowlton. That's awesome. For he, he didn't say he taught. But when there is one with authority, you watch and learn. Just the fact that he exists taught them. How many of y'all realize that the more you get to know about Jesus, the more you learn about him just because he is? Matthew chapter 9 and verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Brother, where is that word in that scripture? 
Can I tell you something? This is kind of funny. This is unique. It does happen often in the Bible. You all, you, it, it, I don't take the time and I don't want to take the time to do this very often because it just gets me. Brother Hodges, when I used to open an encyclopedia, I would just read. Because all of that information would just fill my brain with it. Come on, I want to know it. Well, when I do the same thing, when I get deep in studying words, and this, I do the same thing. And Sister Johnson, I was studying, and I saw this scripture. You see, I did, I did a search on the word that we're using. And in the New Testament, the, there's a thing called Strong's. And Strong's has a number for every Hebrew or Greek word. And it, that way you can look it up by the number and see the definition. So no matter how they may have translated it, for instance, this word was translated in the New Testament as am, have been, it is, I, and was. So, by looking it up by the number, you can see every scripture that used that word in its raw form. And this is one of the peculiar scriptures that they never put that word into the scripture. Now, that's kind of funny to me. And so I was like, Lord, well, where exactly did you use that? And this is what I got. You ready? But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because he existed. You see, when God sees someone in trouble, he is moved with compassion. Why? Because he is. God is. In your life, no matter what the problems, when God looks upon you, when he taught us the story of the neighbor and the and the and, and, and the the what was he? He was the <laughs> The Good Samaritan. That's it. It was a type and shadow of what we are supposed to be as Christians. And if I'm a Christian, that means I'm Christ-like. If Christ is God, what is He like? When He sees someone in need, He's moved with compassion to help them. So when He saw them, He was moved with compassion because He existed. When you've got a problem in your life, he will be moved with compassion because he exists. Oh, I love the Lord tonight. Matthew chapter 27, verse 54. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake. Oh, I like this. And those that were things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this exists, the Son of God. You know what? When God starts doing His thing, and people begin to recognize that He exists, it wakes them up from their slumber. It moves them. And we've got to be a, a clear, clear eyes that He exists. God is. Watch this. Acts 4. I'm going to hurry. Now when they saw the boldness... Oh, I like this. Come on, somebody. This ought to be you. Sister Shammy, I'm going to put your, your name in here. You ready? And when they saw the boldness of Shammy and Catherine... Catherine, Catherine right? Yes. Okay. And perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant women. Sorry, y'all just go with it. <laughs> Y'all going to like it when I'm finished. Y'all may not like it much now, but, but I can pick on somebody else if you'd rather me. And perceive that they were unlearned and ignorant women. They marveled and took knowledge of them that they existed with Jesus. I'm sorry. I'd rather you know that I existed with Jesus than you think I'm a scholar. Amen? When you get finished talking to me, I want you to know I existed with Jesus. Because God is in my life. God has filled me with His Spirit. He is on the inside of me. Brother Hodges, when you see me, you've seen Him, I hope. Because I don't want you to see my mess and the mistakes I've made. I want you to see the mercy He's shown upon me. I don't want you to see how smart I am. I want you to see how great He is. Acts 10 and 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power 
who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God exists with him. You know something? It's awesome to see Jesus. But let's look at the very end of the story. We'll wrap it up. It's good to wrap it up in the book of Revelation because that's the last book of the Bible. And trust me, I could be going here for six months on scriptures. I, there's that many. The New Testament, I think, has like 12 or 1,400 scriptures that apply right here. Old Testament, almost 3,000. Okay? We could be here for a while. But this is just the ones that, that God pointed out to me. Revelation eleven seventeen. Say, we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art, which exist. Which was, which exist. And exists to come. Because thou hast taken to thee the great power and has, and has reigned. God exists. Amen. You know something when it says, I don't think I put that scripture on here. But watch this. When John saw the visions of heaven, there was a messenger that came unto him and said... Fear not. I exist thy fellow servant. You know what, Sister V. Hill? Somebody might go on to heaven before you, but they still exist. Your fellow servant. When you get to heaven, you're still going to exist. If God is in you here, and the world can perceive that you were with Christ and existed with Christ, when you get over there, you're still going to exist because God exists. Yes. Amen. That just got me excited. I run goosebumps up and down my spine. I didn't put it in my notes, but I remembered it. Revelation 21 and 6. And he said unto me, It is done. I exist. Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. I give unto you, to him, that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. I exist. Alpha and Omega. Now, I, I, don't, I, I don't know anybody here that might be one of our, our, our good Trinitarian friends, but let me help you out. Sister Knowlton, if you believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost being three separate distinct persons of Godhead, I'm going to help you out right here, okay? Jesus said, I exist, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. How could He be the Son if He's actually the beginning? That's puzzling, ain't it? How could he be, if it's not just one God, how could he exist because of the Holy Ghost? Because the Bible says he exists because of the Holy Ghost. So if it's three gods, how could the little God produce an offspring and it be attributed unto another God? Sorry, it just puzzles me. It puzzles you too, don't it? Kind of... Head scratcher. Sorry. All right. Jesus. 22 and 16 Revelation. I, Jesus, have sent mine angels to testify unto you these things in the churches. I exist the root and the offspring of David. Now see, Sister Marley, that's neat. Because when he died, his flesh did not cease to be what it was. His flesh became quickened and picked up that which it was laid down. You see, as the offspring of David, he is the rightful ruler of the throne of Jerusalem. Let me tell you something. They can set kings up, they can vote in prime ministers, but they can never get a rightful ruler over Israel outside of Jesus Christ. Amen? I exist the root and the offspring of David. All right, one last scripture. I like this one. Revelation chapter 1, verse 17. And when I saw him, now, church, in the book of John, it refers to him as John the... Who? No, that's in Revelation. We, re we refer to him as John the Revelator because he revealed some stuff to us. But in... What? No, not John the Baptist. Different guy. Somebody help me out. What was he in the book of John? John the Beloved. 
For when Jesus was at the Last Supper, John laid upon his breast. John was that disciple whom Jesus loved. So when I read this scripture, Sister Mary, y'all, this is something. I love this. This touched me. I almost cried. It's not easy to get me to cry. And when I saw him, who did he see? I saw the one whom I loved. I saw the one that loved me. I saw the one that I saw hang on the cross between heaven and hell when all disciples left him. I saw the one that I testified that I am with him. I was so moved that I fell at his feet. Oh, hallelujah. I believed. Was it not John that said, if you can't believe in him and you've not seen, how can you believe it? Or if you can't believe in what you have seen, how can you believe in him that you have not seen? John says, I still believe. <laughs> All these years, I still believe. And now I've been cast away on a deserted island. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet. Because God is. You see, there are situations in your life Sometimes it feels like you've been a castaway and a vagabond on an island in the middle of the water and no one's there to hear from you and talk to you and all of a sudden you see Him. God, yes. And I fell at His feet as dead and He laid His right hand upon me saying unto me, Fear not, I exist the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I exist alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Church family, I'm going to tell you something. Whenever you're in a situation, you need to remember that God is. God is. What's the problem? God is. God is. He ex as long as there is a God. As long as there is a God. One thing God's not, He's not deaf. You can call Him in the midnight hour and He'll exist in the middle of your problem. God's not far away. He'll show up right on time in the middle of everything that you've got going on. Why? Because God is. He is. He is. He is. And you look at the devil or the problem that you're facing and look at it every now and then eyeball to eyeball and say, let me remind you of one thing, devil. God is. You may tempt me with sin. You may tempt me with anger. You may tempt me with strife. You may tempt me with all kind of things. But when the day is over with, God is the first and the last. He is the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the joy of my soul. God is. I don't know what kind of God you serve, but my God is. Just like the sun is, the moon is, the stars is. Just like everything is, God is. He cannot be broken. He cannot be defeated. He cannot lose. He cannot be overcome or overshadowed. For when He steps in, He is. I know I have a little fun with this, but what happened this afternoon when the sun started shining? The snow went away. You see, that's what happened when God moves in. When you'll let God shine. When you'll let it be what is seen in you. I know I picked on y'all. I love you tonight. I don't think you're ignorant or unlearned. That's not my point. But you see what happens when people begin to recognize that you exist with Jesus. When you begin to allow this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Let me ask you a question. How many of y'all want Jesus to come tomorrow? Not me. How many of you want Jesus to come in your lifetime? Not me. That means I'm hoping to be dead in the grave. 
before Jesus comes. But Sister Knowlton, I want my light to shine till Jesus comes. Because if anybody ever hears my name after I'm dead, I want them to know that my light's still shining. I want my lights to still shine. I want it to shine in the darkness of this world and bring somebody into the fellowship of the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. I want my light to... If God... God help it, but if I get run over by a bus tomorrow, I hope that my light's shining well after I'm gone. You want to know why? They got that new thing on that Samsung touch where they just touch phones. But what happens is, is Jesus touched me. I reach over and touch her. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to touch Brother Daquan. We're going to light a fire one to another to another. And one day, a generation long from now is going to be shining because we're going to pass a fire one from another. That Holy Ghost and fire, it'll keep you alive because it exists. It exists. God is. Stand up and worship Him tonight.